<laughs> Hello. Welcome to another edition of 21st Century Rocker Mom Podcast. And I'm eclipsing you here. I'm eclipsing you on our solar eclipse day and also Rex Manning Day. Oh, Rexy, you're so sexy. If you get that reference, this is why we're friends. I mean, I hope you've watched Empire Records by now. In this thing called life, as Prince would say, the artist formerly known as Prince and then Prince again. But like I say, <clears throat> you got <clears throat> a little bit of time to spend with me, the mouth of the South, <laughs> Western Ontario, and definitely the ass to match, Tanny Candler. I'm just here with you, hanging out, bi-weekly, generally bi-weekly, <clears throat> sometimes weekly if I get hyper enough or I get enough time, I'm here. Like I say, being the mouth and the and the ass of the South, like it's uh, like Southwestern Ontario, not the South. It's proven. It's fact. I don't need one of your fucking fact checker stickers. That fact has been checked over and over again. I have the biggest mouth and, you know, an ass to back it up. Like I say, I'm peer reviewed, bitch. I'm peer reviewed. Everybody knows. And how I say peer reviewed is like really like a few people found out that I actually like, I don't think they heeded my warning. And I think I, I don't know if I put it out as a warning or I just put it out as a fact because most of my stuff isn't really, I'm not warning you. I'm just telling you, I'm informing you, I'm educating you, I'm letting you know how it, how it is, how it be, how it go. So I believe I put something on Instagram to the effect of, I'm just going to let you know that like, like my bark is like bad. Like my bark is bad. And they'll say, oh, don't worry, their bark's not as bad as their bite. And that's, you know, a, a really common term to use with people. I'm like, I will assure you that my bite is a hundred times worse than my bark any day of the fucking week. And so I think a few people didn't really heed that cautionary tale. I'm not going to say warning because that's too harsh, but like cautionary tale and they fucked around and then they found out and like, it's sensitive situations where they fuck around and they find out. I think they try to see how many buttons they can push <clears throat> before it goes kind of like south, like mouth from south. And then they catch my, they catch my bad side. Nobody wants to catch that. Trust me. They, you don't want to catch it. And I'm not going to tell you who it was or what, what they did because it would out each like situation because and that's not fair to out everybody. They've been talked to individually, privately. I'm going to drag them around. I mean, some of you I'm going to drag around. If you get, if, if you're, if you're worth dragging, I will drag you. Like you're, if you're like a pedophile, for instance, that happened, I'll drag you. I don't give a fuck. But like I say, <clears throat> when I say that I'm peer reviewed, that means that like half my peers like stick around for it. And then the other half are like run the other way. <laughs> So thank you for the ones that stick around for fuck. You're amazing. If you're fucking running, if you're running from me, just make sure you hydrate and fast. Originally, I'll say this show was about to be about why I joined Kitty and the whole story behind that, because like a bunch of you had asked about that in DMs or comments. And they're like, hey, have you ever done a show about why you joined Kitty and like what that meant and done a whole show about that. But I really didn't feel like dedicating a whole show or like hour or two hours of my time talking about a band that I've been out of longer than I've been in. Or should I say longer than I, I was in, right? So like, it just doesn't really hold as much value to me. I know it holds so much value to other people because especially people that are just getting into kitty history like now like people that are just hopping on now and younger people it's really hard because they're just like i don't know the story and i'm just like watch the documentary but that they don't want they want more you want more you like you know tiktok videos and <clears throat> tiktok i can't hardly go on anymore because tiktok is like the man one direction it's gonna get me in one direction run to, right into fucking jail because everyone who follows me on tiktok is like under 18 and i don't know what to do with that like 
Do I, do I send things back? Do I not? I am a 41 year old woman. Is that grooming? Like, what is that? I don't know. I don't want to be predatory. So I watch my shit, man. I watch and I'm very, very fucking careful. So, you know, the kitty rabbit hole and what goes with being in a band and on tour and doing all that stuff young is not something I'm going to dive all the way down and being in the industry at, at a young age. That's by request. This is by request. Y'all want to hear the story and all that stuff? Like I say, I've been out of Kitty, like the band, longer than I had been part of Kitty. However, however, that said, somehow you always stay like connected and there's always a connection somehow to people, whether it's people in the band or people that you know within the band or you still stay connected with each other. And a lot has to do with actually like loyal, loyal, like, die hard fans which i personally consider to be my family chosen family definitely because you you choose your family you know what i mean you get to you get we get to do that we get the choice to do that which is cool and good bonds good bonds with people that are in and have been in and out of that band keeping good bonds and maintaining good bonds with people whether they're happy bonds or you don't talk anymore but when the chips are down, who the fuck is there for you? That's the one thing that you need to ask yourself because that is something that in the last couple of weeks, and I will say the last couple of weeks have been really fucking dark and they've been kind of gloomy and really depressing. Kind of like how the fucking eclipse is going to make everything go dark for like 15 minutes or so today. It's going to be cool. I have to make sure I'm not podcasting when it's eclipsing because I can't look out the window. Otherwise, I have unicorn glasses that my my girlfriend brought me over. She's like, oh, I have all these extra glasses and I'm working. I'm not going to need them. I'm like, what if you have to drive home like during work? So she was so lovely and she brought them over for me. And I was like, oh, my God. I'm like, I was so thankful. So I'm just like, oh, come down to the lab in the show soap shop and get something. She's like, oh, I didn't. I have hardly brought you anything. I'm like, you brought me glasses for the eclipse. You brought me the gift of eye protection. Oh my God, I owe you one, girl. Like seriously, home girl. People don't realize like their value. That's another thing. I gotta say that, I gotta say that. People don't. And like I say, good bonds with people, whether new or people that you've known forever are really important to keep those bonds in place. And when the chips are down, who the fuck's there for you? Who is going to be there for you? And who are gonna be your friends? Like. Your friends all know who the fuck you are when you're like up and everything's like fucking good for you. Everybody knows your name. But who the fuck knows your name and who is contacting you and trying to get a hold of you when you're down? You know what I mean? How many times are your is your name on people's lips when you're down? How often do they reach out to you? It might be hard for some people and not everybody's me too. So I'm a reacher outer and I'm just like, are you okay? Like I'm just that kind of human. I just, I feel really deeply. I feel really hard. I love really hard. I care really hard. It's like I, everything I do is really hard. If I hate you, I probably hate you fucking hard. I don't do anything halfway. If I don't like you. I fucking just plain, I don't like you. And I can't, there's nothing you can do to make me like you. If I don't like you, it's probably because you're a hor horrible fucking human and you've done something not good to either another human or like that I know or like myself human, or you're doing something to humanity as a whole. But like I say, showing up for each other when times are shitty, even no matter what you're in the midst of in your personal lives or what you're in the midst of, like in your friendship lives or your situationships, when you show up for each other, when shit goes fucking south and it hits the fan, that's when you know who your real friends are, who shows up for you, who cho like who's checking in on you, who's making sure you're okay, who's who's like asking your other friends, like if they can't get a hold of you, being like, you know, is someone's okay, is everything cool? Those are the friends that 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 check out. End of the story, like showing up for each other in good times and in bad times. That's that's what keeps those bonds alive, and that's what keeps bands alive, and that's what keeps those friendships alive, and that's why we still continue to have those bands and, and band bonds. And like I say, we're part of a kitty family, then more than just like you know band members and stuff. Kitty's doing their thing, and where everybody else is, you know, doing their thing as the world you know turns. I liked 
a little bit of metal before I joined Kitty, but not the kind of metal that we played because I'd been raised on like the Beatles and like Led Zeppelin and Frank Zappa and Hart and like the Beach Boys and stuff like that, the Shirelles and the, the Supremes and stuff like that. Uh, <clears throat> a lot of that stuff. Chuck Berry, you name it. Like n raised on kind of oldies more than newies. And so new metal was a whole new thing for me. But I jumped in with both feet because I was so attracted to the people that I was playing with on such a musical level and each person and member like of the band, like at that time, and I mean, to this day, had their own individual and personal charm that attracted me to each one of them, right? You have the laws of, you know, attraction and how you are attracted to people, not, you know, always in a, it's not a sexual way. You're attracted to people for different reasons, you know, and things draw you together for different reasons. And at that time, they drew us together because it was, you know, it was a lightning in a bottle sort of moment, you know, back then. So we started jamming and, you know, off we were like a rocket, you know, from, you know, like a hobby with your friends, like, you know, you know, on the weekends to a full-time job fast and young too. And at a time where it wasn't fully grasped and I'm not even sure if it's fully grasped, grasped now that like women play music. Talked about this a little bit, like in the last episode about guys thinking that, you know, you know, female and female presenting folk are like not still not, you know, enough to make the cut in the world and still don't have the chops. I mean, even when they have the chops and guys are like, this rules behind their back, they're still like, there's still that running commentary and it still goes through. I was talking to, like about this to somebody the other day. And they kind of like echoed what I already like have heard from so many other people. The women and female presenting folks are still not taken seriously in the music industry. We're not paid the same. It's, it sucks. So it's, it's, it's hard. I'm not sure people even grasp that. And really and honestly, like when I was in Kitty, I was around for like the fun times. I was around for the good times, the fun more kind of footloose and fancy free times back then running around New York, you know, kind of when Giuliani was mayor and being dicks and when I say being dicks, I mean, I speak for myself. I am a multiplicity of dicks. Um, <laughs> but I say those are the footloose and fancy free days before everything got too, too serious, like too, too serious. We took our fair share of like, people throw in fucking shade big time or beer bottles. You know, sometimes someone would throw a beer bottle if they were a real fucking see you next Tuesday. We get people to take care of that though. So it's fine. We were the butt of a lot of jokes, especially from like grown ups, because we were like 15, 16 at the time. Right? So like we were definitely the butt of the jokes, but <sighs> then we did spit. And, you know, Kitty continues and spit hit really big and it resonated well with a lot of people. And so Kitty still continues like now and more power to them to keep that legacy kind of fucking going after all the shit the band's been through and all the years and all the members and everything. Uh, there's so much history there. I think that, you know, it's worth it to keep fucking chugging along. If you got a good thing, go with it and keep going. So I wish all the best to Kitty and their ventures, current things and cool things that are happening. I got music obviously present on my brain always, especially now because I'm, I'm more of a, I do it more as a, it is a blue collar job because it's definitely not a white collar job. I don't know what being like an independent contractor falls under blue collar because I am working with my hands constantly being a creator. I'm creating something or I don't know if artist falls under some other kind of collar, maybe like a fluffy shirt collar, like the Jerry Seinfeld puffy shirt collar. Maybe it falls under that collar. I don't know. Maybe I'm a puffy shirt collar worker, puffy shirt collar beer company. I'm going to just make my own beard company for just artists. I already have one. It's called rockaholic. I'm just fucking kidding with you. Oh God. I've been making candles this week. Speaking of going to things and like we're going to need during the eclipse and going into the studio new, I'm going to write like this candle. This candle is called Bananarama. And Venus was her name. She's got it. 
Yeah, baby, she's got it. Look at me light the wick. How do you light a candle? Everyone says, don't you put instructions on your candles? I'm like, what instructions do you want me to put on my candles? Light the fucking wick and keep your crotch goblins the fuck away from these fucking candles. Trim the wick and keep your crotch goblins away from these fucking candles. Don't put them near flammable shit. Be smart. Don't get high. Don't get drunk. Don't leave candles on. Be responsible, you know? Fuck. No one has a song called Fuck the Fire Department. So, you know, like if you get into trouble, call 911. Not me. I'm not responsible for you after you purchase a candle from me. You're your own rainbow and you can do it. Like I say. So on the topic of music and mayhem, of course, we have the eclipse today that is on the horizon. I'm, I'm watching like from my back window, like outside, I can see right now that the skies are clearing, which I'm really surprised to see because we were supposed to have a hazy ass day. And it's not, holy bananarama, that smells so good and the wick burns so nice. Like, I thought about it the other day and totally off topic, but like, my last name is Candler. And like, everyone's like, oh, what did your ancestors do? I'm like, well, my mom's European and my dad's British, so we were probably fucking colonizers. Horrible. But when we weren't being assholes, we were probably making candles. And also, we created and invented. Coca-Cola, Asa Griggs Candler, check it out, Google it. But we have Eclipse Day coming today and I've read all kinds of amazing like conspiracy theories about it from it being the cabal to it being, now this candle's paranoying me because I had a fire in my house when I was a kid. See, if you can't attend a candle and you can't be 100% attentive to it, don't have it on. But that smells amazing. It's banana cream pie. So that's what banana rama is. They're coming to you. For the people that have, you know, whiskers or don't have whiskers that watch this podcast because they want a little beard shit too. And oh, maybe it's because they think that I'm a hilarious individual. Or who knows who I'm going to throw under the fucking bus next. Nobody knows. Nobody knows. And that's the great thing about this podcast. No one knows what the fuck is going to happen next, including me. Really, I mean, I have my notes, but that's not much. We got the eclipse. Every now and then I get a little bit lonely when I see you coming round. Turn around, the sun and fucking moon are coming together and they're gonna get on top of each other. And then they're gonna hump and it's gonna be fucking dark for 15 minutes. Turn around, don't look directly at it or you're gonna fucking blind yourself. You're gonna burn your retinas. Don't look at the eclipse unless you have eclipse glasses, like I say. My homegirl like totally bailed my ass out of like blindness. I was gonna have to like, I'm like, oh God, what am I gonna do? I'm like, I wanna look at this eclipse so bad. And I'm like trying like to like make sure like my kids don't look at it without proper eye protection. So it's like we have proper eye protection for the kids, but I'm like, I wanna look at it too. Because the last time there was a partial eclipse, I remember my dad was alive and I was a really little girl and he built me a pinhole camera so I could look through the eclipse, like look through it and look at the eclipse because it, it can hurt your eyes and it can damage your retina, retina and you can have a, uh, like it's a, uh, it's almost like a retinal, like a burn in your eyes and you won't generally feel it right away, but it'll be days after. So again, if you look at the eclipse and I'm being really dead serious about this right now, we're talking, we're going fucking, I'm putting on my fucking nurse hat and my safety fucking shit right now. We're going health and safety, bitch. Because if you look right at the eclipse and without proper eye protection or eye protection that hasn't been certified properly. And then a couple of days later, you start experiencing symptoms, contact your doctor or nurse or, or optometrist, like immediately book an appointment and see if anything's going on with your eyes or if they've been damaged because you don't want to look at that. Like my dad built me this box because he wanted me to be able to look at it safely. He did, he made me a pinhole camera. And if you know how pinhole cameras work with like refraction and such, Look it up if you don't fucking know how a pinhole camera works. You learn that in like grade fucking three for crying out, Pete. Jesus. But like there's a lot of conspiracies out. Like one was that Kurt Cobain was coming back. And I was like, yeah, say hi to Jim Morrison for me. Um, if any like weird naked people show up too, say hi to them too. Um, that this is going to be some kind of like biblical thing. That when all the lights go out, I think... Robert F. Kennedy Jr. said something about microchips. This is when they're going to be in our brain. Some aliens are going to be down doing some shit. 
um, like, I mean, animals are obviously going to be acting strangely. They're going to be a shift in migration patterns for birds and migration patterns for animals, where they're going and how they're behaving. We may behave different as humans. Who knows? We'll see. This obviously affects people on a scientific level because it really does. If you just think it's just the sun passing over the moon or just like the, the you know, the moon and the sun coming together, it's not only that. It's a major shift in thinking. It's a major shift in progression. It can be. Eclipses can. They can bring on, on even from a like a celestial point of view. I'm not saying like heavenly or biblical, but from a celestial point of view, eclipses are like a like a birth of something, a rebirth of something, something new. So think think about the last one that happened around 78, 79. 79 is 55 years. 1979 was the last full solar eclipse. And the next one won't be till 2099. Hopefully I'll be around eating a soft cracker in the corner with no fucking teeth. But like I say, there's no reckoning. The cabal's not fucking coming for us. We're not going to get pulled up to the fucking mothership for 15 minutes while it's dark or whatever. Um, and we're not being microchipped fucking RFK Jr. He's so fucking ridiculous. I can't even, I can't even compute his stupidity. It's ridiculous. It's just one celestial object fucking covering another. That's what happens. What the result of it is, is something completely different. But scientifically, what it is, is just kind of this doing this, you know, and then there's a ring around one of them. Holy fuck. Two trailer park bitches go round the outside. Round the outside, round the outside. How can you not... How do you not know what an eclipse is? Oh, this just eclipses me. Oh, that's that's all I'm going to have to say about eclipses. That's it. That's it. But this, uh, like I say, this next chapter of my life involves me going into like a proper recording studio. Of course, I have the stuff to do it here because Rob set things up and... He's really good at techie shit like that. Whereas like I'm good at like doing it and getting the music in there, but oh fuck, I am a bastard sometimes with techie stuff. It's so difficult for me sometimes to grasp things unless I like see it done a bunch of times and then someone walks me through it. I don't know if it's just because of my neurodivergence and how I learn because there are certain ways that each people, each people's learn. Humans have Generally, they're called like the four ways, but they're, that's a based off like a Rudolf Steiner thing that I'm not going to get into because we're going into studio stuff because I'm going into the fucking studio. So there's not much really in the way for recording as it is as song smithing and getting like little tidbits put together to sound more better, like to sound way better and be like, okay, what can I add here? What should I put here? You know? I put tambourines and fucking accordions on shit. So like, I'm not really like shy about instruments. It's just about who I work with. And so I put my hive mind out there and I put my little feelers out, especially around like here. Cause I really need like a gifted producer, engineer, mixer, kind of like someone songsmith or like someone who can kind of like, who writes though, who like is a musician themselves, who can help me with this shit and hopefully put together a better acetate for the people that, I'm going to be in a band and that's coming with um, and so they can add like their parts. I'm not saying like here, this is my band and here are the parts that you are going to play. I want to be like here, I want to hand you this so you can listen to it. I can send you this file so you can listen to it and I'll be like play along to it and play what you would play and so we'll get it together, you know. So you all practice on your own and then practice together and it's always better when you do that. Because I find then like people have jammed things out on their own and then you get together and you get to jam this. No one's standing there going like, oh man, what do we do? Like, I don't know. Just, I would, uh, what do you think? And, and does this sound good? Sometimes that works too. But like, I like how you can shoot it around a table with each other before you even get to band practice. That's another, it's another whole fucking thing. Well, like I say, I put the feelers out there and especially around like London and here and the area and stuff. Except for a few places that I know um, that I go to, most women have recorded in this city, like my age. There is like an exception of like places that I didn't put my feelers out to because I know they're closed now. 
But like, so these recording studios are where like women, like I know my age, younger, older, have recorded and stuff like that. And so I didn't get a lot of like super amazing recommendations. And then when I looked into that and like, you know, asked people, have you recorded with so-and-so? Have you recorded with so-and-so? Have you recorded with so-and-so? I... They all had like bad fucking experiences. They all had like fucking like situations that I'm not interested in being involved in or interested in fucking someone catching my fucking hands from. Because like I say, my bite's a million times worse than my fucking bark. I'll bark about it all fucking day. <clears throat> but if you put your hands on me, especially like in a professional situation where you're supposed to be, you know, professional. Because I hear about this happening all the time. I'm just like, really? I'm like, because they catch my fucking hands. I'd knock their teeth down their fucking throat. No, 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 no. We're going to talk about EDC later and what that means, what an EDC is. And when, once you find out my EDC, again, I said, someone fucked around and found out. <clears throat> Do not fuck around because you don't fucking want to find out. I'm just putting it out there for you. So I put, like I say, I thought about this. I thought about this because even bands and recording studios and producers and engineers are still grooming people and young people and people my age even for like relationships and like fucking casual sex or payment in sex. I heard one person who was telling me that they had a lawyer who would ask them to pay in sex. And they were just like, what? And you know what I mean? Like, how can a lawyer ask them or a lawyer buy them hookers? What? Like, or the, like for the client to buy the lawyer hookers because they couldn't pay him in sex, obviously. So he was like, why don't you buy me some hookers then? It's cheaper than paying the bill. And this person's just like, prostitutes? You want me to pay? This is illegal. I can't do this. So yeah. So people do some weird stuff. So I want to make sure that I'm a safe space, like for me. I want to make sure I'm cool. Make sure I'm not getting like humped in a fucking vocal booth or fucking, you know, you know, fucking he touched my breast like while I'm like playing guitar or, or she touched or whoever. So after not much thought, because I didn't need af much after hearing all the fucking bullshit that I heard, um, I decided to have a producer come to me and she is going to record in my studio but bring her gear and stuff with her because she's amazing at doing that stuff. Mobile and she's female and she does it all. She produces, she records, she engineers, she writes, she sings, she plays all the instruments. She's kind of like a woman after my own heart completely. And... I just need something to give to my like bandmates so this works. So it's going to be demo tapes and zero rapes because I'm fucking not having the bullshit because I'm at the age in my life where, you know, I'm doing the things that I want to do, not the things necessarily that I have to do, but I'm doing things that make me happy. I'm playing bass in my own band. Like I'm going to play fucking bass it's really cool so like spring is here so auditions are gonna come in between fucking markets because i have so many markets booked this spring with the with the um with the the grooming company and stuff like that and since it's growing from like you know it went from like grooming oil and, and beard oil and hair oil to like butters and then like it was like i don't make balm but then want it to like washes and then it went to like wax melts and candles and now it's like different kind of creams are got like lotions and different kind of creams are coming down the pipes and like I've got like a conditioning wash I'm working on oh my god like it's just everyone said to me one day someone said to me and it was another fucking grooming company owner and I think he knows who he probably is if he's listening and he said to me Oh, Tanya, it's a slippery slope. And I was like, oh, yo, you know, so-and-so, I'll be fine. I, I'm fine. I've got self-control. Everything's good. And yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I said I would be fine because it is a slippery slope. Oh, my God. The next thing I'll be making fucking, who knows? Who knows what the fuck? I've actually, I got a couple products coming down the pipe. So fucking stay ready, bitch, because I'm always 10 steps ahead of the fucking game. And I'm always doing something. That's one thing that I I don't think 
other companies do and maybe that's what sets me apart from other companies because i don't do the beards and bitching i don't spit all this shit up anymore i don't give a fuck because this is all this is all what i do i think the thing that sets me apart from other companies is that i will be 10 steps ahead of the game and i will do something controversial that nobody else does and not give a flying fuck about it and know that i will do it well and i think fear is what really holds you back huge and fear is what fucks you fucks your business fear screws your life fear holds you back from so many things fear is your greatest competitor in the entire world other companies aren't competing with you other bands aren't competing with you other creators other musicians other filmmakers other workers other co-workers like your colleagues folks at work it's not you're not it's not them you have to compete with it's not at all it's fear it's the fear of just pushing through it and doing better and like i say when I want something, I don't ask for it. I just go out and I fucking get it. If you want something, fucking get it. If you want something, fucking take it. Don't ask. I don't mean steal it. I'm saying get it, earn it, get it, go for it, man. Get that shit. So I think that it's really cool because I'm really excited to see um, auditions i haven't done auditions with bands for a while and auditions i mean that in the nicest way because it sounds so mean because it sounds like you're just like picking people for a team but i just want to see like who has kind of like what chops and what they sound like and then who will like gel well together as like personalities because i already pretty much know who is going to play like guitar because they're a female and they're awesome we haven't had a chance to like sit down and jam too much yet but we like talk about it like constantly we like the same kind of like you know, crust ass punk music and because I'm not going to go back to metal because I just don't want to <laughs> at all. But like, I, like I'm not a decent metal player and everything like that, but I really love, but like my, my heart and soul is like punk rock and roll and like I'm a hippie too. So maybe it'll be some kind of me first in the gimme gimme's business and some Luna Chicks covers and some crazy shit, but I'm going to play some fucking lead bass. I'm gonna play lead bass. I don't exactly just play bass. When I play bass in a band, oh yeah, I play fucking lead bass. I slap at the bass like fucking like a motherfucker and singing. And it's nice to have someone to like sing with too. So like, especially when there's like, I, I, like I'm not trying to like be like gender biased, but when there's another like female voice in the band too, or at least someone that sounds female, even if it's a, like a, a guy who's got like a really nice falsetto, if those two voices gel really well together, two higher pitchier range voices, sounds great. So, you know, it might be the second coming of Josie and the Pussycats, but do I give a flying fuck? No. Orange is the new pink, pink's the new orange. I don't fucking know what's going on. It's so Rufus, I don't know. Oh, like I say, all I need now for this band, I know intuitively, like I say, that guitar player is singer is secured. Someone else who can sing and play guitar. And I can play guitar in a worst case scenario too. I'm just not really a great lead player. She's a better rhythm player than me and could play circles around me forever. So she can do that. I'm a good bass player. So that's what I do. Rhythm section relationship is important. The drum and the bass got to lock into each other like a fucking metronome. So that's the kind of drummer that I need. I don't care if they identify as a fucking tree as long as they can drum. Um, I don't care. I don't have any, you know, it's not like the wild days where we like dressed up everybody in different outfits and did those kinds of things. Who, who knows? Who knows? Maybe it'll be something silly and we'll all dress up in Elvis suits. I don't know. But no, but having a solid, solid drummer. And then I need a solid lead player. Someone who is confident in not just solid, like I don't care if they make a mistake, but someone who is confident in pulling off leads and being like, hey, I'm not afraid to try that. Or I, you know, I don't mind giving that a go. I'll, I'll, I'll take a stab at that, you know, and if they can't, do it they're not like embarrassed to say be like oh forget that one i guess that's not happening we'll try something else you know someone who's not afraid to think outside the box that's what i like about people like that musicians like that i'm doing the things that bring me immense joy i'm sparking my fucking joy marie condo whatever the fuck her name is i'm sparking my joy the last few weeks have been so fucking dark it's been non-stop darkness and sadness and heaviness and bad things in my soul and not good feelings it's been a really fucking sad couple of weeks like and it's hard it's hard still it's so it's sad right now it doesn't stop but 
it did really get me to a place that I needed to realize that life, and I've said this before, like after I had like my like strokey seizure dying thing, like losing my life for like a few minutes and like flatlining and seeing my dad and stuff and like him being like, go back to your kids. Like, so near death experiences and like, you know, dying and those and seeing the light and things like that. You think that would have like, you know, kicked me into high gear, you know, a while ago, like last May or whatever, when I had my seizure, my big, big seizure, but life is short. Like, so fucking be happy. Be as happy as you possibly can because life is really, really short. Party in the fucking forest if you want with your friends. Let your friend cut your bangs with Swiss army knife fucking scissors. I didn't say that I did that at all, but like life is fucking short. So you better enjoy it now because we're here for a good time, not a long time. Remember that. I said earlier that I have an EDC. What's an EDC? Other than a really cool beer company with a really cool owner, Everyday Carry EDC. That's a shout out to Lee, by the way, from EDC. If he's watching at all or listening, but an EDC is an everyday carry. It's something that you carry with you like every day as part of your your setup, like what you got in your pockets, what do you have in your, I don't know if you carry a fanny pack. I personally carry a fucking backpack everywhere I go and I get asked about it. I'm checking the time for the eclipse now. Woo, no, I still got a little bit to go. Uh, no, I'm fine, I'm fine, I got at least an hour. Um, I never stopped fucking talking, so I gotta check my time, man. So I, I told some moms, because I was at a birthday party this weekend, and one of the moms asked me, you know, because I said, you know, I'm an open book with shit, because I don't have a job like the other moms do. Like, I don't go out and I don't work in an office, or I don't work for an office, or I don't work in finance, or I don't work as a lawyer, or a doctor, or a dentist, or a real estate agent, or, a, you know, I don't work for an insurance company, or so, you know, so I don't really have a straight job, what I, is what I would call it, because I don't have a steady job. My work is, uh, like, I'm an independent contractor, so my work lands where it lands. I always try to have work lined up, like, I mean, other than, like, I have the grooming company, like the beard and hair company, which is great for a steady income. But like, where else do I get my money from? And they're kind of like, you know, moms get together and ask that kind of stuff. And they're just like, and you know, when there's no kids around, you can get together and ask each other that kind of shit. And I'm an open book, huge. Number one, autism. Number two, autism. Number three, ADHD. And number like four, I don't really fucking care. I'm 40 fucking one years old. I don't give a shit what you think about me. I don't give a shit what you think about how I make my money or how I pay my bills because it's you don't have to pay my bills so why do you give a fuck so I'm an open book about that kind of stuff as if you were the moms are like wow like your life is really like crazy like it's like music or or movie stuff and your husband like and this is another thing that I got into too like one of the ladies there asked me why I don't call Rob like my husband like specifically I'm like because like he's not my husband even though he does like what traditional husband like duties would do he's my partner. He's, he's more than a husband to me. I think that husband, like to me, to me personally, is like a cop out. Everyone's like, well, he's here boyfriend. I'm like, no, he's my fucking man friend. Does he look like a boy to you? Jesus Murphy. Does he look like a little boy? Gross. Disgusting. You people are fucking disgusting. But someone had asked me when the moms, like when they're asking questions about the backpack, why do I carry a backpack? It's almost like, well, they asked about the green ribbon. I'm like, oh, cause when I take the backpack off, my head falls off. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But like I, I said, you know, Rob's my, he's my partner because we're not legally married, but I don't think that you have to be. It's nice and everything like that. But like to proclaim how I feel about someone, I don't think that I need to pay someone to tell me how I feel about it or necessarily need a piece of paper or anything like that. Last name stuff, that doesn't bother me. Ugh, fuck, it's 2024. I don't give a fuck. So anyways, when I told some moms at the at the party, the reason I carry a backpack is because our son has type one diabetes. And some of you in the bearded community, especially talk to me and the podcast community and the people that listen to the show, talk to me, we go back and forth about your type one diabetes because my son is type one diabetic. And I'm always like, if you ever need diabetes stuff, talk to me, especially if you're newly diagnosed, let's go back and forth about that. So, I talked about why I carry the backpack with my everyday carry. My everyday carry is generally his insulin 
and his glucagon, which is a, is a nasal drug that you spray up your nose in case someone has an extreme low. Insulin is so in case he's, his blood sugar is high. I can check his blood sugar on my phone anytime I want. It's got a cool continuous glucose monitor app. You can check that stuff. So that's my part of my everyday carry. So I have to always make sure I have my cell phone on me too to see where my kid is. If he's at school, I have juice boxes on me because also other than like, so my, that's my everyday like school carry, right? Like what's at school? I'm like, oh, juice boxes, fruit snacks, come up candy, insulin, emergency drugs. I'm like, cause what if he falls on his ass when I come to pick him up at school? Cause he's got diabetes, you know, what if something happens? I always have to be ready. I was a girl scout too. So don't discount that fact. But like someone like me, when I started to go everywhere, especially when my son got diagnosed with diabetes and so many people were like, oh, well, you can't go anywhere because like he has diabetes and that's going to be like such a crutch for you. I'm like, that is the most ableist shit that I've ever heard in my life. Get the fuck out of here. I, we can go, we go to Florida, like we can be driving the car. We bring his insulin with us. We put it in a cooler. Like it's not, his diabetes, like. Uh, people try to put people in boxes and it's silly. So my everyday carry, not to the school, not to the school to help with the diabetes and stuff like that because I do his diabetic injections and nursing and stuff at school right that until he has his nurse that's going to come to the school and whatever and help him out. But I carry like an army backpack that is like a, like a, a army camo backpack that has one Swiss army knife in it, one buck knife with a blade on it that's about like that long. So this is when I like I have to go to like hiking and stuff like that. Um, I carry a can of legal mace for the face in case anyone wants to fuck around and find out. I carry burlap, like tough ass string, real tough ass string, almost rope, but thick burlap string in case I need to tie something together. A poncho in case I ever got screwed somewhere and I need to put it on top of me or if I kind of need to make a shelter out of it. Oh dude, I'm like survivor man. For real. I got a multi-tool in there. The multi-tool is a shit. It's even got a flint in it. I have a little hatchet on me. I have like my survival pack for food. It's got like Kool-Aid stuff, powder in it and beef jerkies and shit that I made. A soda, uh, quick sugars, matches. I have a lighter, um, what you call it? Um, usually I bring a few pre-rolls with me. This is what I'm talking about when I'm hiking by myself. Pre-rolls. I have some snacks, probably some clove cigarettes in there. This is for me. This is not like a hike with my kids going on a fucking field trip and with the school going to the forest or whatever like that, backpacks. This is what I carry with me like if I'm going on a hike with me and any like medication that I take, like anything for like blood pressure or my ADHD or uh, pan I take panic attack medication if I need it. Uh, so anything like that. And then I also take like black, black coffee and water with me. So if I ever need to boil water quick, I can make a fire, make black coffee, make hot water warm quick because that dilates your bronchial tubes when you have asthma. And that said, I bring my puffers with me fucking everywhere I go because it ain't easy being wheezy, but black coffee, black, black coffee dilates your, your bronchial tubes and you can breathe if you get stuck in the chest. That's another reason I love coffee. The doctor says it's for me to slow the fuck down on coffee. She didn't say fuck. But she said, slow down on the coffee there, Candler. And I said, okay, I'm trying. But it's Monday, you know, like the, we didn't have mail yesterday. So all my packages are going out today. All the mail's weird because of the fucking eclipse and everything. And everyone's afraid to be outside. And oh, I don't know. So I guess, you know, with an everyday carry like that, I guess that's how you get your bangs cut with the Swiss Army knife doing weird shit, just a complex Swiss Army knife. And sometimes it just, you know, Swiss Army, like you should send the check for this haircut to my, my new hairdresser. At least I didn't fall in a hole anytime like this weekend. I've been there and I've done that. At least that didn't happen to me. I was really concerned. And anytime I'm out in like the wilderness or I'm out on a wilderness walk or doing things, especially in the dark, has to involve the woods because I've had so many clumsy, not bad experiences, but just so many clumsy experiences between the woods and graveyards. Fuck man. I have fallen into so many fucking graves when you're like not supposed to be in there and stuff like that. Mm, yeah, I fumbled. Not like anything with anyone in them. Like 
like, but like the next day there's supposed to be a service or something, right? And they got to lower the casket. So, you know, my ass should not be there anyway. But, you know, I was a weird kid and, you know, I hung around cemeteries and I'm a weird kid. And I still, I was saying this to someone the other day and like making new friends. So this, is, this will bring me to another point about making new friends and things like that and how it's refreshing. And, uh, I used to think making new friends wasn't good, but I find that more people are as, uh, share the same comorbidities as I do. And uh, that makes us good pals. But like I was saying, at least, at least I didn't fall in a hole. And now the other moms know that I have a weird job, but that pays the bills. And it's like, they seem that they're like, okay with it, which they don't have to be okay with it. Cause it's my, again, it's my bills, not yours. I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck how you pay your bills. I don't care if you have an OnlyFans account. I don't care how you pay your bills. Not my business. Anyways, I'm happy to be podcasting away between like screening and screaming on my like audio stuff and doing weird music for weird projects. Uh, like I don't really go on the TikTok much. I'm used to doing YouTube and like Instagram and like on the streaming sites for my podcast where it streams. I'm streaming away all the time. I don't use the other platforms because I said like TikTok makes me feel like I'm responsible for all these people, like as an elder person. It makes me feel like I have a huge responsibility to them. So I feel like whatever message I'm putting out on TikTok, that gets out to like over 40,000 people. A lot of them being impressionable young people. And I don't want to send them the wrong message and turn them in a direction they don't need to go. Because they're just finding themselves you know, now too, and like finding their way in this world and kind of carving a path out for themselves. I don't want to interfere with their path or their, their, their growth, you know? So I want to make it as unbiased for them as possible. My mom mode goes into high gear when I go on like TikTok and stuff like that. So yeah, I don't want to get chatty with like, no offense. I don't want to get chatty unless I know your parents. <clears throat> unless I know your parents. I don't want to get chatty with 14 year old kids. Like I just can't like the stranger danger guys, gals, non-binary pals. Don't be talking to older people. They're going to groom you. Fuck. Like even if you're like listening to this podcast, like I'm not going to groom you. I'm here to tell you about like there's fucking bad people that will though. Jeez Louise. I am your mother. You listen to me. I'd rather be with people within like, Either way, like 10 to 12 years of my age, like like down wise, I will not hang out with someone who's in their 20s. I cannot. Up wise, I mean, I, I hang out with people that are in their like 70s, but like they're just cool musician folks, you know, I mean, older even, but like I'm not having a relationship with them. But like when it comes to talking to, I don't want to talk to a 14 year old. I think that's wrong for me. Like, especially as I'm, I have a mother, I'm a, I am a mother, especially as a mother rather. Like with kids, I think that's kind of a little bit frowned upon to me. So I kind of avoid it because it feels too groomy to me. I think seeing people you grew up with or like came up with has to be one of those magical ways. Like this isn't like a on the internet thing. This is like people that you see in real life. This is the great thing about not being on certain social media platforms because some of my friends aren't, which is amazing. And I don't see them often, but it's the thing about when I do see them, the greatest thing about being together is when you get back together, the minute you get back together and the minute you see each other, it takes you back to the time where you're at your like heyday of like knowing this person and hanging out with this person. And you always revert back to that self and what you did at that time. Whether you're, you know, you're out, you know, smoking cigarettes and sharing cigarettes or doing something, you know, silly like that. And you just revert back to those times. Everybody has those friends. And sometimes you don't see them for 10, like I say, or 20 years, but you talk all the time. But when you do see each other, like it's a love fest, like no matter what the reason you get together, 50% of my friends, I would say, and my closest friends like of life, like 
live in other countries or so far away. And like when I say other countries, sometimes, like, sometimes it's like America, but it's like the long the way away from here. Like I have friends all over the world, but a lot of them like have gone, like moved away. So somehow though, somehow, somehow we maintain friendships spanning 25 and like 30 years. So we make it work somehow. So that makes me love them like even more. So yeah, upon a ton of like self-reflection, writing and being with important people, I've carved out even more of a path for myself now, music wise and like life wise. Also in business, I've booked my ass off with markets like crazy. And between that, shows will probably be popping up here and there between uh, like just pop-up shows. Like literally they'll be popping up between markets because I don't know what, like other people in the band, I'm guessing will probably have kids too because we're at that age. And also I've been candling, like you say, because I'm a fucking candler. In between that, because it's around, uh, I get up at around four or 5 a.m. to do my candles or do them late at night. And that's when I get all like my thoughts and I can get all thinky and crazy. I can concentrate more, make more plans because like, seriously, you really like never know. So I've been making my plans when I get up like super early in the morning and like thinking about, you know, morbid stuff, dark stuff and your head goes to those places. Unfortunately it does. I'm at that weird age where now I've like lost a parent and most of my friends have lost at least one parent as well. There are like no more weddings unless someone's having like a fucking tying of their hand ceremony. And there aren't any more baby showers because we're all like into geriatric pregnancies at this point. Um, it's all funerals and like memorials or kids birthday parties where everybody fucking coughs. Fuck. It's true, but like, and making friends is weirder, like I say, and more guarded for me as, you know, you get older with people because you still see that high school fucking like mentality. Like when people ask me about my job and they kind of like look down their nose, like, well, fucking how much money do you make doing like that? But then they'll be like, oh, that's a fun job. And they find out like, it's like, oh, you get to make stupid fucking ass voices for shows and, you know, act like an asshole and get paid for it. Oh, cool. Great job. You know, but you still see that high school shit. That's why I have like a handful of like mom friends because generally other than kids, I don't have a lot of co in common with the, with the common mom. Like you're a soccer mom. I'm a rocker mom. That's just, that just, it's, you know, no, maybe our kids go to dance together. Those are things that like I have in common with like some moms like that I get along with. Like our kids go to dance together or our kids, if our kids play together, generally like we get along too. Cause like when we like jive or whatever like that, but <clears throat> like the uh, wine moms, like the wine o'clock moms, cause it's like always wine o'clock. I don't jive because California knows how to party and a lot of the other moms sometimes are afraid of like weed. So it's, it's funny. Or sometimes it's the judgy moms. I'm, I'm like good, Karen. Like if you don't wanna do anything, stay home, I don't care. Anyone who has a snide comment about how open I am, especially with the way I am, I just have like, no time for that kind of drama in my life, especially like the gossip moms who talk major smack about the other moms that they're like supposedly friends with when the other moms like aren't there. I'm like, wow. I'm like, I don't have time for that shit either. So thankfully I don't know too many of those people because I don't hang out with them. The moms that I do hang out with are nice. Like the moms I hang out with are like cool. The, the ones that are like, you know, we're having a birthday party. Do you want to stay or do you leave? Like the ones that I like will stay with and like not drop my kid off and like head for the hills. Those are the moms that I'm like, oh, these moms are chill. I can, I like these moms, you know, they're cool. And like parents on the whole, cause it's not always just like the moms pulling off the birthday parties. And I always ask myself, who and what are you at your core when I meet people? <clears throat> That's my wonder. Like when you're like, what's your wonder about something? What do you wonder about someone? 
who are you like really like what you got going on for real what is what's your story starting over is scary like you know with anything friendships school jobs relationships moving everything playing again playing again getting up on stage and i got up on stage and played for 30 kindergartens the other day and that was fun because they're gonna be the most judgy ever they're gonna tell you if you suck they're gonna be like whoa you know what i mean but it was the best awesome time and the kids had fun i had fun i even brought my didgeridoo let the people decide you know what they like like the kindergartens like the french revolution Like I say, I had the craziest dream the other night. And correct me if I'm wrong, but this is just like with the let the people decide in the French Revolution and overthrowing everything. I had the most fucked up dream. And I have to tell you what it was the other night. It was so fucked up. It was the weirdest dream ever I've ever had. Okay, saddle up partners, because this is strange. Okay, so I hear the term, and I'm sure you do too. Illuminati, the Illuminati, the Illuminati, the Illuminati. I hear it thrown around like a ton, especially since like the beginning of COVID. Like people started like, obviously they talked about it before, but the Illuminati and what it means and what it really means. Like Illuminati really means to be like illuminated, like enlightened, the enlightened ones, right? But like, I like was reading like something someone had put about how the Illuminati, Taylor Swift was part of the Illuminati and she ate a kid. I was peed. Like it was ridiculous. Okay. So like, let's, uh, let's be serious here. Okay. I had that weird dream about the Illuminati and the Rothschilds and snakes and all this stuff. And the Illuminati would say it would, it, it included people like Bill Gates, uh, Beyonce, Oprah. Oprah can't even influence me to turn on the television. I don't know how the fuck she'd be in the Illuminati. I find Oprah Winfrey boring, but that's just me. Not what people paint the alarm, like the Illuminati, what people like painted as today. It didn't form the way people think it is today. But I have some Illuminati stories for you. It originally formed in Bavaria. <clears throat> like I say, Illuminati means like enlightened. It comes from Latin. That's where like the, the word is, like the originally the word's from. The founding Illuminati had an idealism that the enlightening oneself and the enlightening of oneself through knowledge would evolve a human to break the bonds of ignorance through education, thinking, and reason. Like, that doesn't sound so bad with the fundamentals of, of, of illumination and the Illuminati. Like, learning things for yourself. <clears throat> Adam Weishaupt, in 1948, he was born, and then he became a prominent lawyer by 1773, uh, yeah, 1748. Between 17... 73 became a prominent prominent lawyer at the university of engelstadt and his specialty was canon law now i know you might think that means his law was over wars and deciding how someone could fire a cannon in another country but it wasn't canon law is actually an expert on the laws of the church but the thing about adam weishaupt was that he was not a member of the church because he didn't believe in religion. This pissed off the University of Engelstadt because, 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 because of the wonderful roots it has with the church. It was deeply, deeply rooted in the church. So it was not only rooted in the church, but it was rooted in Jesuits. And Jesuits were people in the 16th century that believed in uh, globalization of evangelism, like a global evangelism for the world. And they colonized many territories and they actually didn't oppose slavery either. 
So the Jesuits were not great people. There was no economic progress under the Jesuits. So the Pope actually said, fuck this, no more. And people came under attack from the Jesuits because they were pissed because they had been shut down. So the gentleman, Adam Weishaupt, he kind of went and he turned to Freemasonry, which he soon probably learned is just a club for middle-aged rich men that want to dabble in philosophy. I mean, so what did he say? I can do better. I can do better than that. And what did he do? He got about six or nine people and they joined his secret society. And they believed that science and religion could be partners, not enemies. And that way religion was being delivered and the way you delivered it was not oppressive to people. They had a choice and they had a free choice to not just blindly and dogmatically just like follow something and blindly believe it. They got to say, you know, where's the proof? They can pick either or, or both, you know, that's what's going on. <clears throat> so as far as the Ill Illuminati goes, old-fashioned Illuminati, free market capitalists fucking hate them because it allows people to think for themselves. The rebellion of mental slaves fighting for freedom is what kind of they started on. That was their fundamentals. They attempted to kind of spread enlightenment. And then around 1777, Charles Theodore tried to liberalize Bavaria and the Illuminati, they, they liberalized it so much that the Illuminati ended up actually kind of killing itself. It was a self-assassination. People panicked over what was going on and how liberal things got really quickly. And historically, it was a moderately, like I say, the Illuminati for a long time was popular and it was a moderately popular boys club. They did crazy things. And for someone who didn't believe in church and tears of things, the gentleman who who invented it, eventually called himself like the king of the Illuminati, but it kind of like fooled it. Like modern day Illuminati, people believe that they control things like wars, poverty, puppet strings on government officials, vaccines, pedophiles, the cabal, reptilian people. I think the truth is that sometimes we as people put idiots in places of power. We place them there ourselves. And I'd say that we need something to blame it on. Or maybe that's something that I would say if I was part of the Illuminati. I don't know. There's so many musicians that I say are part of the Illuminati. Like, like Taylor Swift got thrown under the bus. The Beatles, because the Beatles versus the Stones, they needed the light and the dark. Beatles being the good guys, the Stones being the bad guys. Staying all those messages in a bottle because Stuart Copeland from, from, from the police, his dad was in the CIA, so apparently he had ties to the Illuminati. Uh, David Bowie, because he has ties to Aleister Crowley and apparently Satanism, which actually the Illuminati wasn't built on Satanism. It had to do with Christianity originally, if you look it up, the original meaning of it. Bono, Justin Bieber, Kiss, you know, Devil Worship, Knights and Satan Service, Miley Cyrus, Rihanna, Katy Perry, Jay-Z, Rick Ross, Christine Aguilera, all those people, you know, all those crazy fucking things. They're going to enslave all fucking humanity. You know about this stuff, this eternal oaths. It's so creepy, even the website. I went and searched the website for like the Illuminati. It was like, I'm reading this. Be successful in all domains of life belonging to the brotherhood. Meet world leaders. Become a member today. Read about us in detail. Know about our wealth, fame, society, and organization. IlluminatiSupremeCult.com. Join us. That sounds a little bit too fucking evil dead for me. Like, that's fucking crazy, man. That's crazy. Apparently, we're going to get subliminal messages through Katy Perry and shit. Through the Illuminati. I don't know. Like, I get some little messages through her boobs because they're big, but that's about it. But I don't think that Taylor Swift is here to be like, nice to eat you, where you been? Like, she's not eating kids. 
They're not here. Taylor Swift's not here to enslave all humanity. Because, like, when I look at the Ill Illuminati and stuff, like, I look at books. I don't watch new, like, weird documentaries about it. I do sometimes. But I looked at the pandemic, and I think it brought out a lot of conspiracy theories. And it brought out a lot of fucking racist, anti-woke movement people. Like... Tom McDonald, for instance. He's a Canadian, like, posing. He's like a rapper, if you don't know who he is. He's a Canadian rapper posing, like, as an American. Always talking about, like, American policy and American gun control and American politics and stuff like that. But, like, do people not realize he's a Canadian? He has no fucking business in American politics, in my humble opinion. He needs to, like, fuck off. Because he's doing the whole, like, anti-woke movement. And wokeness, like, here's the thing. Like, he refers to it as a problem. And people are like, oh, this is woke and this is woke and this is a fucking problem. The problem is not wokeness. The problem is sleepiness and being tired and sleeping through all of this stuff that's actually happening and ignoring it and thinking it'll go away. Bitch, if you try to ignore the wokeness, it's going to wake you up 10 times harder and it's going to shake you up. Fuck this anti-wokeness movement. It's hilarious. I think we need to, as a people wake the fuck up and look at what's going on around us. The war, the poverty, the hunger, the the hate, the divisiveness. No, 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 no. We don't need to look at it in a hateful way and say like, fuck anti-wokeism, fuck this person, fuck that person. Rappers like Tom McDonald, and I feel like they promote hate. I think like we need to learn to love each other. I think that's the kind of bridge we're looking for and we need to look towards if we're going to be anti-divisive. I don't want to be anti-fucking woke ever. I want to know and keep my fucking head up. That's what being woke means. It means stay woke, protect your fucking neck, keep your fucking head up and look all around you, think laterally and wonder what the fuck is going on. Ask questions. Don't be part of the anti-woke movement. I don't care what you think it means. It means you're sleeping. I'm going to leave that right there with you. What does that say about our fucking world, huh? If you don't want to know all the things that you don't want to know under the veil, maybe let them stay there. Be anti-woke. I don't give a shit. However, then, I see you. I will see you. I see all of you because I'm woke. I'll see you next time. You know where to find me. You can find me anywhere you're streaming your stuff. You can find me on, you know, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, all those different places now because Neil Young went back on conditionally. So did I. So did I because I'm woke. I'm kidding. Um, you can find me on YouTube at Tandy Candler channel. You can click the link on Instagram. I'm always on Instagram at 21st Century Rocker Mom. You can find me there. You can find me on TikTok, not as often. And uh, yeah, I'll be, I'll be around here. Like I say, don't look straight at the eclipse today. Unless you're wearing your glasses, be careful. Safety first. And uh, yeah, so peace, love, empathy, all those things to you. And uh, yeah, be careful. Love one another. I'll see you next time. Be good to each other. And yeah, I'll see you in a few weeks. Be good.